Hello again. This is the second in a series of videos about strain gauges. I talked to you before in the first video about how uh, resistance changes in a wire as the length changes. So now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about an expression for something called gauge factor that tells you how the strain gauge actually works. Now I made a little imaginary strain gauge. Real strain gauges are little tiny things, so this is, this is my imaginary strain gauge. What I've got here is a wire that's wrapped back and forth on a uh, like a plastic substrate. All right. The idea is that if you stick that to something, stick that to a structure that's uh, undergoing stress and therefore undergoing strain, um, the length of that wire will change. Now, the longer the wire is, the more sensitive it is. So rather than use one little piece of wire or insist that the structure be really long to accommodate a large piece of wire, we wrap the wire back and forth on a little uh, uh, sheet of plastic. These were originally called foil resistors. It's actually, you can use it as a resistor as well. Um, strain gauges come in basically two resistances. The two, only two I've ever seen are 120 ohms and 350 ohms. Now why those are the standard, I don't know, but those are the standard as far as I know. Um, so by wrapping the wire back and forth, we get a long wire in a small space. So we get increased sensitivity without big changes in the dimension of the gauge itself. And they're uh, quite usable gauges that are extremely small, a few millimeters on a side. Okay? So remember, the gauge is averaging the strain across the sensitive area. Now, the way this, is, this one works, uh, we ignore the, the little uh, semicircles on the end. That distance right there, I don't know what I'll call that, how about D? That's the sensitive length of the gauge, all right? So we know pretty much how the thing works now, or the, the gauge itself works, but we need to be able to do something very important. We need to be able to relate change in resistance to change in strain. Now, the whole idea here is as those wires stretch and get just a tiny bit longer, the resistance goes up just a little bit. Now, that's okay in words, but we need to be able to attach numbers to that. So, there's a very simple expression we're going to use and do just a little bit of math, and we're going to come up with something called a gauge factor. What a gauge factor does is it relates change in resistance to change in strain. So, that's the big picture. We want to develop an expression that relates change in resistance to change in strain. It turns out it's a constant. So here's how we do this. We're going to start out with the expression for the resistance of a wire. Okay, R is resistance. Okay, and that's going to be in ohms. Rho. Now there's there's only 26 letters in the the Latin alphabet. And there's what 23 or something like that in the Greek alphabet. You've probably seen rho used for other things. If uh, oftentimes rho will get used for density. Here, it's used for resistivity. There's a finite number of letters, you've got to reuse them. So this is called resistivity, and this is a material property. Okay? It's a property of the metal that you're using to make this gauge out of. Every metal has its own resistivity. That's length, and that's cross-sectional area. So if we have a wire, there's a little segment of wire. That's L, and that right there is A, and resistivity is a property of the material itself. It's just like density or elastic modulus or something like that. All right. Now, what we really want to know is we want to know how this changes with L. Okay. So, I'm going to drop a C-bomb on here. I'm going to do a little bit of calculus. What I really want to know is I want to know this. Right? That's what I want to know. I want to know how resistance changes as length changes, because as length changes, that's strain. Now, the problem is A right there changes. Okay? This is not a constant. Because of uh, Poisson's ratio, if you stretch a wire out, it gets narrower. That's Poisson's ratio. That's the effect it has. So this gets a little nasty, because you have to go and start using things called constitutive models for metals. So I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to show you how to do this approximately. And the appro since you're never actually going to have to derive this yourself, most likely, this approximate solution is almost certainly going to be enough to explain the idea. So what we're going to, I'm going to do here is let's imagine something called a liquid strain gauge. Now, these were real. These are some of the first strain gauges that were used, and they were used by doctors. Take a a uh, piece of latex rubber tubing, 
and fill it with mercury and seal the ends and put a little lead into each end so you can measure resistance across the, the ends of this column, this tube of liquid metal. Okay? Now, the, what this was originally used for is they would wrap this uh, tubing with the mercury in it around somebody's chest and when they inhale and exhale and the chest gets bigger and smaller, the length of that tube would get long, longer and shorter. Tube gets longer, resistance goes up. That's a strain gauge. Now, it's full of mercury and so there's all kinds of health problems, but at the time I guess they didn't know that or at least didn't care. It has one very, very useful property, this liquid metal strain gauge. Mercury is incompressible. Its volume never changes. There's no, because it's a liquid, we don't care about Poisson's ratio anymore. There isn't one. All right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this liquid mercury strain gauge. Liquid mercury strain gauge. And I'm going to develop the uh, gauge factor for that. And it turns out the gauge factor for this is almost exactly what you'd get for one made out of solid metal, and including all the, uh, all the second order effects that I'm going to ignore here. Okay, so here's how this works. I really need that, okay? But area changes. Well, here's the way to do this. Now, I, I can't tell you I would have thought of this. I looked this up in a, in a reference from my work. Multiply that so you get that, all right? Rho L squared over V. Now, I can multiply by L over L. That's just one, so I'm not changing my expression any. Now, what makes this nice, volume is a constant. It's a liquid metal. I already told you, Mer the mercury is incompressible, particularly compared to the very soft rubber that contains it. So that's a constant now. Taking a derivative with respect to L is now easy because rho is a constant and V is a constant. So if I do this, I get this. So far, so good. Now, it would be nice if I didn't need to know what the volume was. So, again, another one of these mathematical steps that clearly works, but I'm not sure I would have ever thought of. Let's do this. Multiply by L over L again. Okay, there. So I get 2 rho L squared over VL. Now, this doesn't look any more useful than it was a second ago, but trust me, it is. Because of that right there, that equals R. So I get to do this. This is where it gets really handy. Okay, now it's starting to look a lot more useful, this expression right here. Now, I told you I wanted that number. I wanted change in resistance divided by change in length of the wire. I'm going to make one small change to make this a little more useful. Okay, I'm going to divide by the R and I'm going to divide by L. All right. So I'm going to get dr over r divided by dl over l, and that equals 2. This thing right here is usually called k, and that's the gauge factor. Okay. So dr over r. Well, I already, we already told you that the, gauge, the gauges themselves usually have a resistance, always have a resistance as far as I know of 120 ohms or 350 ohms. So that's just a number. All right, change in resistance, that's what we're going to measure, so we're going to know that. And DL over L, change in length over length. I think we've seen that before. Isn't that strain? So you can also write this. And like I said, that's gauge factor. Gauge factor is almost always called K. I've never seen it called anything else. Now. That's two. Boy, that's a nice round number that's very easy to deal with. Yeah, but this is an approximate calculation. I'm assuming liquid mercury, not solid metal. Well, it turns out that if you go through all the calculations for a, a strain gauge made with a plastic uh, a substrate, plastic base, and a printed metal film on it, what you get is 2.0 something. There's always a little card that comes with your package of strain gauges that tells you what the gauge factor is. And you generally need to enter this either into software or if you have one of the old-fashioned bridge boxes, you actually dial in a little number there to dial in the uh, gauge factor. So two for our liquid metal strain gauges. I was using some gauges the other day 
uh, from a company called uh, Vichy, and the gauge factor on those was 2.06. All right. So six parts in 200 is the only difference. Three parts in 100 sounds like three percent difference. So I can assume liquid metal. Do a very simple calculation. Show you where uh, gauge factor comes from and get almost the right answer. So there you go. The next video in this series is going to be to show you what to do with this thing now that we know how to relate resistance to strain. Uh, data acquisition systems only know how to measure voltages. They don't know how to measure change in resistance. So there's got to be a little bit of circuitry hooked up to this to turn this change in resistance into a change in voltage. That's the next video.